Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we were doing a review of the DJI Mini 2 drum. So I decided not to do an unboxing on this, uh, just because the setup and the unboxing was pretty messy and there was a lot of packaging to it. And I didn't really feel like editing at all because I knew there was going to be a lot of stuff that had to be cut out. So uh, first of all, everything is packed in this bag. I got, I got the Mini 2 flying combo kit so it came with everything three intelligent batteries a two-way charging dock get sturdy on the bottom quick but the carrying case uh the drone protectors everything like that screwdriver which i didn't even get and extra propellers which i did not get either uh but i'll have a picture on screen showing what it all comes with so first when you open the bag you have three little you have a little sectioner here that makes three little sections um one for your drone, one for your batteries, your remote, or however you want to do it. There's also in the back, right here is another little place, which I just keep kind of little cables and things in. And then in the carrying case, there's also a little compartment over here, which I have not put anything in, but it's it's not exactly padded inside this one. But uh, if you do need it for anything, maybe a smaller iPad mini or something like that, which by the way, does not fit in the controller. I bought an iPad mini just for this and it did not fit in the controller. So warning everyone now. But uh, anyways, let's get into it. So first, what you're gonna do is take out your batteries. Second, take out your controller. It really doesn't matter the order you take it out in. And uh, third, you take out your drone. Now I'm going to show you guys how to take off the protectors and put them back on because it took me a while to figure out how to put it on. So um, first, we'll do that towards the end of the video though. I'll have timestamps in the description. So first of all, we're going to grab a battery out of our two-way charging hub. Now the two-way charging hub, basically you can use it as a power bank for your devices. Uh, I do believe it just takes battery off of the lowest charged battery first. And um, you can also use this to charge all your batteries. Now it only does charge one battery at the same time. It does not charge all three, but uh, still better than nothing. And then you can just click the power button over here to check your charge. Now this is a uh, standard quarterly percentages. So first bar would be 25, uh, second would be 50, third would be 75, and fourth would be 100% full battery. Now you plug it in with a type C charger. It does include a 18 watt brick and a type C cable. Uh, so there's a USB port for out power for your power bank and there's an in power for you know type C charging the actual Batteries themselves now as you can see I have everything fully charged it takes about I don't know probably two hours to charge all the batteries and uh, each battery you get about 25 to 30 minutes out of uh, on flight time, but that depends how you use it if you're in sport mode then you don't get as much. And especially if there's wind, you don't get as much either. 25 minutes to 30 minutes is the, uh, if there's perfect conditions and you have good remote control signal and uh, everything like that, that's kind of like the max you're gonna get. But let's start with the controller. So what you're gonna wanna do here first, after you get everything set up, is you're gonna wanna pull out your joysticks. Now they do make it like this so that you can uh, put it in the carrying case and not have those joysticks break off, which is helpful because I've had mine break off, okay? just like that and then you pull out your other one okay and just like that now I will say these joysticks feel really really premium um, anyways getting into the basic functions uh, if you press this once it checks the battery life of your controller and um, it does charge with type C as well it's not a removable battery it is a uh, lithium-ion battery so basically to turn it on you just tap and hold then you'll hear that little sound. Now it's on and it will blink. And then to turn it back off, you just do the same thing and it will make another beep. So uh, you do have your modes on the controller. You can also control this uh, via your phone as well. But um, cinematic mode, you get about 10 miles an hour. Normal mode, you get about 20. Sport, you get up to 35. Uh, my max speed was 35.8, so you know. I'm still not really sure what the FN button does, but I'll have to figure it out later. This switches your camera mode from photo to video. Triggers up here. This takes a photo. It also takes a video. Also stops. And uh, this little dial is so that you can move your camera up and down. So for example, there's a gimbal protector on the drone, but that little camera moves up and down. And there is a gimbal on this drone actually. So even if it's kind of shaky, the gimbal keeps that camera straight and it does take very good footage. Now, um, setting this up. So whenever you want to put your phone on it, you can just pull this out. And once you get it pulled out, you can adjust it the way you need. You can just pull it up and then you put your phone inside of the 
drone. Uh, controller, sorry. Now, it does come with three cables, Type-C, Micro, USB, and um, Lightning connector. So, basically, how your phone gets a video signal from the uh, drone and your pretty much dashboard um, it, that's displayed on your phone comes from your controller. So, basically, it's just all drone to controller. It's not exactly drone to phone because the drone has, like, a three to six mile range but you know three miles with your battery but then again that's in perfect conditions and like nothing ahead of you and uh that wi-fi signal would not reach that far so it does use its own connection to the remote controller and it does connect to satellites for gps i'm not exactly sure if that uses your phone's service but i don't think it does i think it has its own internal uh sim card situation but anyways you can pick which cable you want to use or you're just your favorite one to uh like for example, whatever device you're gonna be using with this primarily, and you can take the cable and actually just plug it in right here. So in my choice, my thing here, I have the lightning. So you see, you can just pull it out. That's actually not a port that just holds your cable down there. And you can just take it, and as soon as you plug in your phone or device, you can just plug it in. Okay, that's not there, so. Probably not the best day to do this review, but we're gonna do it anyways. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my phone and switch to a different camera. Okay, so now I have my phone on the controller. Apologies for the horrendous camera quality. Apparently my only option at the moment is an iPad Mini 3 because nothing else will charge. So, we shall make do with what we have. Make sure you're in a good service area so that you can get that GPS location. Uh, set so that if your controller disconnects or dies or anything like that, it will automatically return to the GPS location that it was started at, and you don't want to have a bad GPS location for that. Okay, anyways, so you're going to want to go ahead and open your DJI Fly app. Now, make sure you're signed into your account and you have your drone connected and everything. Just turn it on. Now, I'm just going to leave that sit on the side here for a minute, and we're going to do the drone. Okay, so first what you want to do is take off the propeller to, uh, propeller protector, which is just held on by a little snap. And then you take that off. This is the hard thing to put on because you have to get the propellers in the right uh, places. But I will show how to put that back on later on in the video. Okay, now first what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open your front arms first and then open your down ones. If you do it the other way around, then you'll just have you'll you can't because of this little peg thing. It won't let you open them the other way. Now take off the gimbal protector. This is pretty easy. You just kind of put your finger here and you just kind of push the clips and just kind of take it off. Now you see it does have a little mechanism there, and to put it back on, you just kind of it's kind of hard. You just have to push it in like that. Anyway, so we're going to take it back out. And now we have our drone ready to go. So in order to turn this device on, this is how you also check your battery, by the way. Check your battery by clicking it once and then how to turn it on, you press and hold. Now I have to put a battery in it real quick. So this is one of where you're going to want to go ahead and grab your battery or get your dock, depending on what kind of kit you have. And in order to get a battery out of the drone or the dock, you hold in this little clip and pull it up. It does take a little bit more pressure than you're probably used to. And then anyways, to put it in the drone, you flip this little cap up, sorry about that, and then you take your, you take your battery, look at the pins, make sure that they match, and go ahead and insert it. Click it back, you'll hear that click, and then in order to turn it on, the first time you turn it on, you're probably going to be a little bit scared that the propellers are going to move, and they do kind of do a little lock thing when you turn it on, you'll see what I mean, so we're going to go ahead and turn it on. but it's nothing. Okay, then it'll go that doo-doo-doo, whatever. Now there is a light here. I believe this is just the button that you hold in if you want to connect to a new account or something. And, uh, wow. <laughs> Seeing that gimbal in action is amazing. So yeah, you can see that gimbal is insanely strong. And it's got some power. Best gimbal ever. Anyways, you're going to go ahead and uh, then basically start taking off. So whenever you have them both on, they do kind of automatically connect. 
So we're going to go ahead and set it down on the pavement here. Okay. Now you can see it did kind of connect here. It does say take off with caution. Uh, no GPS signal. So that's just going to be me moving my phone and my cricket service should Anyways, so at this point forward, you're going to go ahead and press this to take off. Now we are going to start screen recording. And now, okay, and we're going to go ahead and take off. Now I do recommend that you, uh, you probably, yep, okay, there we go. I do recommend that you calibrate your compass. I haven't even done that yet, but for the purpose of the fact that it's going to storm, uh, I'm just going to kind of hurry this up. So uh, you can see your battery level here. It's on three bars, so that's like 75-ish percent. And now your controls, as far as controls go, this, up, down, side, side. Now this, on the other hand, back, forward, side, side. So as far as that goes, that's the controls for that. Now one cool thing that I do want to note about this drone is that the DJI Mini 2 includes sensors under it. So for example, if it detects something under it, it will raise up automatically. So I'd say probably a few feet high, but that's still good enough. Okay, now we're kind of moved here. Hey. Okay, now we're kind of moved to a screen recording position here instead of the iPad, which you can uh, see I just kind of set on right there. Now, the DJI Mini 2 includes a very nice feature called Digital Zoom. So you can actually zoom into things here. You have up to 4x depending on what kind of mode you're in, or you can just go ahead and manually do it with your fingers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fly up. First, we're going to uh, test out the cinematic mode, so this will be slow speed. So you can see the max speed up is about 4.3 miles per hour. Max speed down is about 3.1, 3.4. Now, if we go up here, now I'm going to show you turning. So it doesn't really give you a speed for that, but you can see how slow it is. So it's nice if you're trying to get those shots. And then we're going to go ahead and roam around a little bit here. I'm going to go up so I don't hit anything. Okay. Now, full throttle test in cinematic mode. Okay, so it looks like you're going to get about 11 miles per hour, maybe 12. Uh, it also does depend on the wind, which right now there is no wind, but, you know. Okay. Just thunder. <laughs> Anyways, going backwards. 7 miles per hour, 8, 10, so about the same, 11, 12 miles per hour, about the same there. And uh, I did change my units to feet, but you can see if I go up and down, the H, where the little feet thing is, stands for height, and uh, that's how far you are up, and D stands for distance away from you, so uh, just to kind of get those cleared up. Now, we're going to go ahead and switch into normal. And I'm doing this with the controller, but you can press... Well, maybe you can't. Okay, maybe you have to do it with the controller. Okay, so up. You're going to go about 6.7 miles per hour. Now going down, you're going to get about 6.5, 6.7. Okay, now going forward. So it does beat 12 this time. It goes about 16, 17, 18, 19. I said about 20, so yeah, about 20, 21, you know. And uh, going backwards should be about the same thing. Yep, 20, 21. Okay, now the last speed test here will be sport. Now this is the insane test. <laughs> now, actually, if you see in CineSmooth, whatever, just compare the turning speed, normal, sport. So that does change that speed as well. Anyways, we're going to test out sport now. Up, 10, 11, it looks like it has a little bit of a faster acceleration to it as well. Uh, 11 miles per hour, going down, about the same thing. Oh, no, okay, about 7 or 8 miles per hour. And uh, going forward, this is where it gets kind of crazy. 20, 25, 28, 30, 
31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So max I got up to was 35.8. I don't think I hit 36. That was a flash of lightning. And um, yeah, going backwards, it's probably about a little bit slower, but should be around the same speed. Okay, now let's get into some of the things here. Oh boy. Anyways, let's get into uh, camera mode. So you can either tap it on your screen here and uh, choose things like video, quick shot, pano, and uh, things like that, or you can change it from your controller, but that just does video and photo. Okay, now personally, let's go into video. Uh, if you see here at the bottom right corner, it says res and FPS which is resolution and FPS, you can change it 1080p, 2.7K, or 4K. Now, it won't change on your viewer. It'll just change in the quality that it actually records in. So 4K, max 30 FPS, 2.7K, max 60 FPS, and 1080p is max as 60 FPS as well. Now, uh, for now, we are going to start with 1080p, 60 FPS, and you can even change your lighting here. Best part about this is they even have a pro mode in the very bottom right corner, and yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and start recording right now. Okay. And as you can see, we are flying in sport mode. Now if you do look up at the top right corner, it does say the battery level, which is now 74. Uh, it is an intelligent flight battery, so basically what that means is it calculates your distance, how far you are, versus um, how much battery you have left, and you are kind of able to, uh, it, it, it'll basically say return to home whenever it thinks that you should come home so that you have enough battery to make it home. Now, the numbers beside the battery is minutes and seconds for how long it estimates you have in flight time. Now, this will change rapidly as has you, how you fly. If I switch into normal mode right now, you can see it's about to go up. But if I switch back into sport mode, it will go down again. Huh, I've actually wanted to look at this field. I'm going to fly around here. Anyways, that dial moves your gimbal, so that you can get a look and a feel for that. Uh, you can kind of go slow with it, or fast with it, basically however you want. Huh, looks like they added little picnic tables. Now you can see up in the top right corner, there are two things, RC, I wish someone would have explained this to me beforehand, but that is remote control. So basically that is your distance, uh, or I'm sorry, not your distance, that is your signal from your drone to your controller. Now the higher, higher you are, um, the better this is going to get since there's buildings and stuff in the way blocking your connection. But anyways, uh, the other number, the little satellite thing, that tells you how many satellites it's connected to for GPS. So that is a great feature to have. And uh, right now, like I said, we're in sport mode and we're recording in 1080p 60 FPS. So let's go ahead and stop this recording. And then let's go and click video again. Or I'm sorry, not video. Um, let's go to auto and go and change to 4K. Now let's go ahead and fly in 30 FPS and start and you can see here the quality is much better now you can't see it on the phone there is no difference uh, it does give you an option for transmission uh, HD video or smooth video I picked HD I want to make it smooth I just don't know how I don't remember where that option was <laughs> so as you can see I'm just kind of flying around here uh, there is a lot of buildings as you can probably tell, so about 1,500 feet is where it starts to lose connection a little bit. But if we want to take it a little further, I'm just going to go ahead and come back to me. You can set your max altitude and distance in set and safety, which I have it on all max. Uh, you do probably want to check your uh, local laws and regulations. 
with the drones because there is a height limit as far as you can go without a license and my drone is not licensed so you can see here if i probably go over 394 yep uh flight altitude exceeds 394 feet a aircraft might be in violation of local laws and regulations check to make sure you have obtained paper authorization to fly in this airspace now um this drone does go pretty high it goes about 1600 feet and it's honestly pretty amazing from that type of view. Just gonna go ahead and go above me here. Flash of lightning, but you probably couldn't see that in the drone. Beautiful view beautiful so let's just kind of take a minute to and that's where we're going to come down now if you do spiral while you're coming down you do go a little bit quicker uh, as i've learned the faster you spiral the more the quicker you come down Okay, yeah, that's where we're going to end this review. <laughs> Just going to kind of stay silent here. Now, one really cool feature about this drone is it has return to home. So if you click on this little thing here, you can just land on its current location, or you can go to return to home. Now, this go does home. make a really annoying beep. Uh, same with low battery as soon as you hit 20%. But it will auto return to home. Just double check, make sure we're still screen recording. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and manually come down. Thunder did stop. Uh, it does look like it's clearing up a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to go ahead and land yet. But as you can see, the 4K video looks absolutely stunning. And you can even play with the lighting a little bit or go into pro mode and have some more fun. And kind of get that shot that you're looking for. Now, in total, I say that this is an amazing drone. Uh, it definitely has a price point, but um, it's it's very good for a budget of under a thousand dollars. And uh, for what it does, honestly, it's it's pretty amazing. Now, I, what I do want to test here is the quick shot. So that is basically, if you've ever seen those videos in like Hollywood movies and stuff, where like there's like a camera, someone's laying in the grass, and it goes straight up. You can actually see me. <laughs> in 1080p, there is 4K zoom. I'll wave. And uh, I can see the drone coming down. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and switch into normal here. Cancel this recording. And go ahead and go into quick shot. Now, there's a few different ones here. I'm not going to be testing all of them, but the one I do want to test is rocket. So we're going to go ahead and do this at 150 feet. So just to give you an example here, we're going to come backwards a little bit. Sorry, forwards. You have a little plus, so you can actually tap it uh, so that it's on you. Now, this is best used when you're laying down. So if you click the plus, it'll select me as an object. It'll start, it'll uh, put me in mainly the center. This does have a little bit of a bug with person detection, but then you're going to want to go ahead and click start. Two, it'll count down. One. And as you can see, it does something that you would see in a movie. Now, I'm not sure why it's person detection is so messed up, but it really is. <laughs>
Oh, there's bugs crawling all over me. Well, anyways, that would be the quick shot. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let that finish out. I did choose 150 feet. So as soon as it reaches 150 feet uh, from where it started, it will stop. And it will automatically return. So quick shot complete. And when you take a picture, uh, it saves to your drone's SD card and your phone, um, at least in my case anyways. And when you take a video, it uh, returns, or I'm sorry, it doesn't return. It uh, only saves to the SD card, because that would be kind of hard to transmit uh, over, you know, the air. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and fly a little bit more, switch into sport. Sport is my favorite mode. Now, I'm going to click it again just so we can get to a little bit of a different mode here. Now, if you do fly um, to a hospital, it will actually give you an aircraft in warning zone. So, that's definitely helpful, especially if you don't live in the area of where you're um, uh, using your drone at, then that is kind of helpful. So, let's go ahead and take a few pictures. So... I'm going to go ahead and go to pro mode. Let's go ahead and adjust that shutter. Now, you can adjust your white balance. I do take uh, JPEG plus RAW because my MacBook can edit RAW photos. So yeah, you can just go ahead and play with that a little bit. Uh, my personal thing, I'm going to go up a little. That's the sound of low battery. I'm so sorry that you guys have to hear this, but anyways. So you can go ahead and manually fly home, or you can just return to home. Go home. Go ahead and switch into auto. Now this is where you can kind of just enjoy the view and just kind of mess around with your gimbal a little bit. <laughs> so this is, it just kind of automatically returns to home. Landing. Now you'll start to hear the drone as it comes down. GPS is pretty good. Uh, usually it's only a few feet off from its destination. And whenever you do end up landing, it automatically puts the uh, gimbal at zero degrees, so it automatically rises it up for you. Definitely don't want to land on the grass. <laughs> so we're going to have to go ahead and cancel that landing here. Unless it wants to move. And it does not. Okay. So we're going to go ahead... And, oh, this sounds even worse when it hits 9%. But, um, I'm going to go ahead and just land it. Now, to do this, you can either do auto land or just hold down the joystick. And you'll see it automatically returns. Landing. Again. Just like that. Now, uh, I want to thank you guys for joining this review. That is pretty much all we have for today. Uh, if you want to see more with this drone, let me know in uh, a comment, or uh, you guys can text me at the moment with 412-610-3862, uh, I think, but I'm not sure. You can check my channel for the text me video that has the number in it, where I'm letting all my subscribers text me for the month, and I've gotten quite a few texts so far from quite a few different people, so uh, that's definitely exciting to see. Uh, secret word is cucumbers, so just say cucumbers, and I'll know you're from YouTube. Thank you guys for joining, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Never mind, not the end of the video. Gotta show you how to put it away. So, you're gonna go ahead and unscrew your joysticks. And just go ahead and slide that back into the little rubber spots. Sometimes they're a little hard to slide in. I'm just gonna select it on normal for the next time so I don't accidentally fly on sport on accident. And uh, you're going to want to go ahead and just 
put that cable back where you found it. So in that little slot thing that I was talking about earlier, I can't get it open again. Also, the grip on this is very nice. But anyways, now onto the drum part. So what you're gonna do is fold this down and this down. So it just kinda, you can't show it on camera. Or I can. So this just kind to kind of folds down like that, and then you can move these in. So that's folded. Now put on your camera gimbal protector first. That's always the best thing to do. And then in order to put this on, you're gonna find those little two clips. Put them on each side. This takes a few tries to get it right. Make sure your camera's pointed down, and then push in and make sure both clips up there are snapped into place. Now, to put your blade protector on, you're gonna wanna make sure these orange tips are, t are uh, meeting. And then, in order to find the placement that this is supposed to be in, always make sure your camera is on the left. And uh, this little piece that sticks out will always go into this little slot right here. So that's how you know where to put it. Now, make sure those are touching, put it in the slot, and just kind of attach it on there. And it just kind of stays there, it's not anything special. Make sure your blades are pushed in and it comes around on the side. And then you want to do the same thing for your top blades. Make sure those orange tips are touching and then wrap it around. And you're gonna go ahead and snap it. Snap it in, and there you go. Your drone's put away, and yeah, make sure to take that battery out or if you want to charge it with the drone, that's fine too. But I'm going to personally go ahead and put this back in my dock. Now, these do get very hot, so be careful when you take them out. So you just slide it in. And as you can see, it is dying. Okay, and then you can just kind of put everything in your carrying case, and you'll be good. So thank you guys for joining this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Okay, seriously, last clip. Apparently, your extra blades and stuff are in here. They are really good at hiding this stuff, so... Don't forget to check that pocket. Okay, peace.